Today's conversation, Singles in the Church. Today's vlog conversation is a follow-up on our last post, Mm -hmm. How Inclusive Are We? Singles in the Church. Mm -hmm. And Susanna, we asked our readers to comment on that post, and boy, did we ever get a lot of responses. I mean, it blew up. That post blew up. I think we had almost 4,000 views Mm -hmm. on this post alone. We got a lot of insightful, balanced, thoughtful comments. Great comments, and very vulnerable comments. I really appreciated people's vulnerability and taking the time to write some of what they did. I do too. thought it was great. We thought that we would just share those responses today Mm -hmm. and read through some of them and maybe make a few comments as we go along. Yeah. I think one thing that we pulled away from reading through all the comments is that many singles in the church do feel alone. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's listen to some of these thoughts. It can be a bit awkward. Everyone is there with someone and sometimes you're left sitting alone. But I think fixing this is a responsibility on both ends of others to invite me into their groups and conversations and of me to ask to join, which I don't expect others would mind. As a single in my 20s, it was a lot less lonely. The young adult, young professional groups were available, making that demographic more acceptable. But now as a a 30-something, the story is a little bit different. I flock toward the 30s and 40s group, but I can't think of another person in their 30s and 40s at my congregation who is not married with kids. So there, I feel a bit lonely. As a never married single woman in her 30s with no kids, I tend to feel pretty lonely in many settings. Hmm. Well, you know, I can understand that. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I can see how it would be a bit awkward and uncomfortable to sit by yourself mm-hmm. in a church assembly. And uh, especially when there's a lot more married couples there than singles. Right, definitely. And I think it takes a lot of courage to go um, to worship every Sunday and possibly sit by yourself. I think it just takes a lot of courage to, to go. Mm-hmm. I agree. In that. I can also add here that I think it takes a lot of courage to, um, to find a church and to be a part of a community. And actually, just this weekend, I heard from one of my good friends. Um, who is not married, and she just moved to a new city. She's looking for a faith community to be a part of, and she went out on a women's retreat by herself. Mm. She didn't know anybody, and she went out on this retreat, and I just think that that is so brave um, and courageous. No doubt. And that takes a lot for someone to do that. I agree. One of the comments we received was from a young lady who talked about the gift of singleness and how that a lot of people don't always see it as a gift. Hmm. Listen to this comment, Susanna. Sometimes I feel people looking at me and feeling sorry that I don't have a husband. Sometimes I see wives and mothers looking at me and envying that I don't bear the burdens and time constraints that come with a marriage and children. Hmm. I don't want either of these. I don't want to be made to feel either superior or inferior. We have simply received different gifts, and when we scorn the gifts, we scorn the giver. I see God dishonored in these attitudes. Wow. That is quite the comment. Yeah. And you know, she's right. Uh, The Apostle Paul talked about the fact that being unmarried was a gift Mm -hmm. that he had received in 1 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's a gift to be married. Yeah. So we ought to see both of them as gifts of God. Definitely. I think that's excellent. I do too. I also like in that comment where she said she doesn't want to be made to feel inferior or superior um, because of her being single. Yeah, I love that attitude. I do too. And that is something we definitely should remember Mm -hmm. um, in in working with people. Exactly. Here's another comment that we got that we thought was really insightful. Um, And it's basically that singles have to ask for help but don't want to be made to feel needy. Hmm. Listen to this. Imagine trying to get all you get done without a spouse to help you, or facing emergencies, or going to the hospital, or having your car break down, and not having a person you can call uh, that you know will rush to your side. Single people have to ask for help a lot, and sometimes end up being seen as needy, and encouraged to try to be more independent. Hmm. That's interesting. That is interesting. 
It's very interesting. So singles have needs, mm -hmm. and they need people to help them with those needs. But on the flip side, they don't want others to make them feel like they are needy people. Yes. Yes. Okay. And she goes on to say that, you know, she feels blessed because she has some great friends who definitely will help her out when she needs some help or will help find someone to help her if they're not available, which I think is great. I love that. So it sounds like she has a great community around her that is willing to help. Yes. With anything. I think she said, didn't she, that she has uh, people that she can call night or day. Yes. If she needs them to help. Yes. That's great. Let's see what you think about this comment, Susanna. Okay. This single says... One of my concerns is not being taken seriously. I often get treated like a teenager since that's the only sort of single person people are used to interacting with. I get the sense that I'm being patronized. Aside from my feeling disrespected, you miss out on what I have to offer in ministry. What do you think about that? Wow. I think that's excellent. Um, I think this person is right on target with that. Comment. You you really think we tend to not take seriously single people? I do. I think sometimes there is a image wrapped around single people that they are not mature. Hmm. That maybe because they're single, they're not mature. And for some reason, you get married and you just have this different level of maturity. <laughs> um, which I don't think is necessarily true. No. At all. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, and so I think people do you know, tend to take them not as seriously as someone else which is a shame well you know i appreciate these singles who are willing to say these things definitely i i, I think this is this is being vulnerable right here definitely and i love the end of that to where this person said what was it you could be missing out on what i have to, what offer, I have to offer in ministry i think that's a powerful statement well again it shows we just need to respect each other mm -hmm. whether single or married male mm -hmm. or female we need to respect each other. And respect the gifts. Yeah, it's good. Listen to this comment. A friend who was brought up in a Baptist church said there was no place for singles as they got into their late 20s. Not all want or should be married. Mm. <clears throat> That's similar to what we've already read from mm -hmm. another respondent. Is that in your early 20s, you're part of a group, a young professionals mm -hmm. group, fresh out of college perhaps. But as you get older and you remain single, maybe some people think there's something wrong with you <laughs> or that you don't fit anywhere. Yeah. And I can understand that. Definitely. I think, Bryce and I have talked about this, and we've seen it in places we've worked, that I think there is a gap kind of in between late 20s into 30s that I feel like is kind of an invisible gap, and a lot of people mm -hmm. in that age group get overlooked. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something that we probably should really work on. We should address that situation. Mm -hmm. Here's a comment from a single parent. Mm. She writes, I actually stopped going to church as a single mom unless it's with my parents at their church. Mm. I hate it. I get anxiety because I'm alone trying to get two little boys to sit still. It's isolating and people are less comfortable with me, the single mom, than women who have navigated our cultural traditions successfully. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It must be very difficult for <clears throat> single parents to manage children in church. I know that's true. Definitely. And we probably need to put ourselves in their shoes. Mm -hmm. What do they feel like as a single parent trying to manage children? Mm -hmm. uh, do they feel that people are frowning on them? Mm-hmm. Bryce and I, when we first moved here, we were visiting churches, and I thought this was so cool that one church we visited actually had a parking lot that was close to the entrance, and the sign was for like elderly people and handicapped people with handicap, but also solo parents. Wow. I thought, what a way to reach out um, and be thoughtful it's good. of people coming with kids. Very you know. nice. I think we better cut off this conversation for today. Mm -hmm. Let's continue it on Friday, and we hope you will join us for that conversation. Sounds good. We'll see you then.